song that asks us to put our vision on the Lord Jesus Christ. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. And I was thinking this week as I had to put in extra fluid into my washer, sometimes the, the visor, even in summer, gets clouded by whatever's out there. And I need a vision cleared and focused on the Lord. And this first song helps us to do that. Well, would you stand and let's ask that the Lord would be our vision. Let's sing together. It's 
do take your seat. Um, Let's just take a moment to pray as we sit. Father, we've prayed, be thou my vision, because you are great. And we ask that as we meet like this, that you would remind us and restore in our sights the fact that you are great. No matter what's been going on in our lives, our circumstances, teach us your ways. Show us your word. Point our hearts to your Son this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you are really welcome, and it's lovely to have you with us today in Black Rock. And I, I know sometimes you, you gather in a place like this, and it's been a really busy week. Maybe you've been out in the sun, maybe you've been away. But this is our opportunity to come back to God's Word and to refocus and to think about what his word teaches and says. And that's what we're all about here, and you're welcome to be part of that. And let me encourage you. Um, we launched last week this idea of enrolling, and usually you enroll in summer schools or in courses. But even if it's summer or winter, whenever it is, would you take these opportunities to enroll in a study of God's word and in a personal application of that? And I, I, I invite you to do that, and we'll be looking again at God's word in a few minutes in Ezra, as that, um, that is, is pushed on us, if you like, we're invited, um, we're invited to enroll in looking at God's Word 
and seeing how it changes everything. So thanks for being with us. And if you are new to us or you're visiting, you're particularly welcome. And we hope you'll, you'll feel a warm welcome and get a warm cup of tea afterwards. And we're going to be having our tea and coffee outside. And that's a nice time for us to share together. So stay around. Don't just leave immediately, but stick around after the service and we'll enjoy our tea and coffee um, just afterwards. Um, thanks too for, for all the help that you have given us in terms of putting these services on week to week. And there's a huge volunteer base um, of people involved in Black Rock Community Church. And thanks for your help on that. But we need more of you. And that is, there are, there are gaps in our rotas. There are things that we need you to, to help us with. And you can see a list of things here. Everything from the music to the serving the tea and coffee. We would love for your, you to join in. And if you haven't got involved in any of these areas, come and talk to me or, or talk to one of the other people you see leading in one of these areas. And we'll get you um, hooked in and serving. And it's a great way to get to know other people and to be part of things here. So we need lots of people involved. So um, also thanks too for your giving. And because as you partner in volunteering and giving, it's, it's that that helps the work here run. We're an independent local church here in Dublin. We're part of an association of Baptist churches across Ireland. And thanks for your support financially that helps that uh, to keep going, that work to keep going. We have a, an opportunity, there's a box on the way out if you'd like to give to that work if you're regular with us. Well, let's take a moment just now to pray together. And um, why don't you pray with me as we pray and ask for God's help and his blessing. Let's pray. The Bible tells us that Ezra had set his heart to study the, the law of the Lord, to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. Father, thank you for examples of people like Ezra who set their hearts on your ways and your word. And just as we sit in the quiet of this room, Bibles sitting around us, Bibles about to be opened, Father, we pray that you would set our hearts too in the same direction. And where we've never set our hearts on something like this, where we've never thought about Christianity as being more than just religion. Would you teach us what it is to follow you, to follow your ways and your son? Father, you are mighty. You are great as we've been singing. And in your greatness, still you cared and loved us. As wayward as we are, despite our treacherousness, we've gone our ways. But Father, you still came and saved us. And we take just a moment in the quiet of the room, in the quiet of our thoughts, just quietly, personally, to ask for your forgiveness for those things we have done in our thoughts, our words, our actions that have been contrary to you. Just, we take just a moment. Father, despite our waywardness, you the loving Father sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you forgive us for the things we've mentioned in the, in the quiet, for the things perhaps known only to us? Would you help us to live a life that's set on you and your ways? Thank you for the good news, the gospel, that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life, the atoning sacrifice for sin. And that by this, that ultimate price for sin was paid. And so we praise and thank you for your provision. Father, we ask that you would help us to remember Jesus as a church. Help us to remember that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Father, we give you a special thanks today for our fathers, our dads. Thank you for them. Thanks for their provision, their care for us, their sacrifices for us. And Father, give those of us with the privilege and responsibility of being dads, give us wisdom and help us to lead and care for our children well. Father, would you help us to be good dads who teach our children to fear you, the Lord. Father, help us to be people who by words and actions would demonstrate that faith and that heart set on you, even when things are hard. Father, we pray for those longing to be dads those about to be dads, and for those who have lost their dads. Father, in your comfort, 
in your way, would you help them and restore them and heal them today? Help them as they look forward or look back with sadness and with happy memories. Would you give us all your comfort as we look to you and your provision, our Heavenly Father? Father, we pray that the good news we've been thinking about, about Jesus, would be so plain in our lives and as we talk to others. Give us courage, not only to declare allegiance to Christ, but to share him with others. And we ask that in Black Rock, many people will recognize that longing for reconciliation with their heavenly Father who loves them. Father, use us, your church. Help us as we serve together. Give us the joy of serving each other and being together like this. And then send us out, holding the gospel out as we go. Father, we pray for our older people in our congregation. Would you guide them as they persevere in following you? We pray for our young people, right down to the children and babies. Would you teach them how to live a life of faith? Father, for all those who are struggling today, for those in pain, physical and emotional, we ask that you would bring healing today. We particularly pray for Scylla. We pray for Saoirse too. Father, would you keep Scylla's sight set on you even as health battles rage on and as the battle for faith in these tough days is so real? Would you give Scylla a solid hope resting in Christ today? We pray too for Dorothy. We pray for faith. We pray for others who aren't able to be with us at this time. Thank you for the big family that you've given us here in Black Rock. Help us to look out for one another. And we pray, just as we think of this family here, we pray for those suffering for the name of Christ, members of the wider family across the world. We pray that you would sustain them and give them courage to keep standing for you. Would you give them a confidence that ultimate victory is in you, not in their own strength? Father, thank you that you are mighty, that you reign, even when others seem so powerful. And Father, we do pray against the work of extremists who will operate today in many countries in North Africa, across the Middle East. Would you thwart the attempts of any extremists to hurt the Christians who live and work there? And we pray for the work of Church in Chains here in Ireland as they inform and guide us uh, to pray for your people across the world. We pray for David Turner and the whole team as they do that work of reminding us about those who need your help. Father, as we turn to your word, show us life there. Teach us the Lord Jesus Christ and his ways. We pray this and all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to read from God's word. You'll see that there's a Bible sitting nearby. Please open to the book of Ezra in the Old Testament. And Ian is going to read for us from the front. That's Ezra chapter 7, the second half of chapter 7. Good morning. Reading from Ezra, um, beginning on page uh, 393 in our church Bibles. Uh, beginning at verse 11. This is a copy of the letter that King Artaxerxes gave to Ezra the priest, the scribe, a man learned in matters of the commandments of the Lord and his statutes for Israel. Artaxerxes, King of Kings, to Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, Peace. And now I make a decree that anyone of the people of Israel or their priests or Levites in my kingdom who freely offers to go to Jerusalem may go with you. For you are sent by the king and his seven counselors to make inquiries about Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of your God which is in your hand, and also to carry the silver and gold that the king and his counselors 
are freely offered to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem. With all the silver and gold that you shall find in the whole province of Babylonia, and with the free will offerings of the people and the priests, bowed willingly, bowed willingly for the house of their God that is in Jerusalem. With this money then, you shall, you shall with all diligence buy bulls, rams, and lambs with their grain offerings and their drink offerings, and you shall offer them on the altar of the house of your God that is in Jerusalem. Whatever seems good to you and your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, you may do according to the will of your God. The vessels that have been given to you for the service of the house of your God, you shall deliver before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever else is required for the house of your God, which it falls to you to provide, you may provide it out of the king's treasury. And I, Artaxerxes the king, make a decree to all the treasurers in the province, beyond the river, whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, requires of you, let it be done with all diligence. Up to a hundred talents of silver, one hundred cores of wheat, one hundred baths of wine, one hundred baths of oil, and salt without prescribing how much. Whatever is decreed by the God of heaven, let it be done in full for the house of the God of heaven, lest his wrath be against the realm of the king and his sons. We also notify you that it shall not be lawful to impose tribute, custom, or toll on any one of the priests, the Levites, the singers, the doorkeepers, the temple servants, or other servants of this house of God. And you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God that is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges who may judge all the people in the province beyond the river, all such as, known, all such as know the laws of God, and those who do not know them you shall teach. Whoever will not obey the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be strictly executed on him, whether for death or for banishment or for confiscation of his goods or for imprisonment. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, and who extended to me his steadfast love before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty officers, I took courage, for the hand of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered lending men, as I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. The word of God in our hands, we saw repeated. Well, don't put it too far from your hands, but we are going to sing and ask that the Lord would help and teach us from it. And this song is a prayer. Speak, O Lord, as we turn to you. So why don't we pray together um, as we sing? So stand and let's sing together. Speak, O Lord.
Just as you sit down, boys and girls, listen, but also all the men, I want you to listen. Because there's a special gift for all of the men today, and that includes the boys. Because it's Father's Day, we have a Yorkie for you. So on the way out, maybe you need it now. If you need it now, go and get it. But on the way out, you can get a Yorkie to have with your cup of tea or coffee or to eat and enjoy when you get home. Um, somebody eating one? No, they're not. No, they're still all there. Um, and uh, so get that. But boys and girls, it's time to go to the kids' club. This is your opportunity to learn from God's Word as well. So you can go with your leaders now, and that's open to visiting children as well. So boys and girls, you can go now. And everyone else, I want you to put your hand on the Word of God nearby, or perhaps on the device that you're using. But let's turn to Ezra and chapter 7 and read it and learn from it together. That's Ezra and chapter 7. Father, just as we've been singing, we pray that you would speak to us by your word. Speak to our children. Speak to our dads. Speak to our moms. Speak to everyone here. Speak to those on the live stream. Speak to us in a way that helps us to understand what you're saying by your word, through your servant. We pray this for Christ's sake. Amen. Sometimes when I look at the sheer scale of gospel work that has to be done in Dublin, I get a bit discouraged. And even though there are indicators of growth, it can still feel gospel work here in Dublin that it's small and slow. Opposition, massive. Obstacles, perhaps even growing. And the question we might be asking in Dublin is how will all the work get done? How's it going to get done? Well, now let's watch the second half, um, the second half of the book of Ezra, with Ezra that we saw last week bursting on scene in chapter 7. Let's watch as God's definitive answer to that question, how will the work get done? We'll watch as it's answered in the day of Ezra. Because here's how. By the sovereign, powerful far-reaching hand of the Lord. That's how the work's going to get done. By the sovereign, powerful, 
far-reaching hand of the Lord, underwriting every significant decision and provision so that Ezra can get to work. And what's that work? Well, remember, it's the work of pointing people to God's Word, helping them understand His laws, living His ways. That's what the work is. And now, remember Ezra's task. It was huge. The temple worship, first half of Ezra, had been restored. There was a temple. Worship is going on in Jerusalem. But how would the people of God live by the Word of God? I have much to learn about living with a renewed biblical trust in God, don't you? Well, today God, by His Word, is inviting us to something. He's inviting us to a renewed trust in God, in His provision, and that, as we'll see, will be accompanied by a renewed trust, maybe even a determination to live a life of allegiance to God, anchored once again in His Word, confident in His Son, the Lord Jesus. That's what's at stake as we listen. There's renewal at stake, and that's what's been asked of us as we study this chapter. Renewed trust, renewed determination to live a life of allegiance, perhaps recasting anchors into God's Word where they've drifted off it, and then that renewed confidence in Christ. There's the invitation. Now, it's a lot to take in, but it's God's Word that will help us as we get there. So here's the first thing I want you to look with me at. Look at Ezra's mission that Ian read for us. Ezra's mission is underwritten by God's sovereign hand at work. It's quite incredible. Remember verse 10, of course, before we, we dip into the rest of the chapter. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it, and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. And then from verse 11, it's the Lord who seems to open those doors that seemed impossibly sealed shut. It's quite amazing as this opens up. Now, we shouldn't be surprised. The writer's flagged this, hasn't he? Look at verse 6, back in verse 6 of chapter 7, because he explained already that the king granted Ezra all that he asked for the hand of the Lord. There's that phrase that's going to come up again and again. For the hand of the Lord, verse 6, the hand of the Lord his God was on him. And so here is that hand at work to enable Ezra, verse 11. Look how he's described. The scribe, a man learned in matters of the commandments of the Lord and his statutes for Israel. The Lord's hand will allow Ezra to return to Jerusalem to teach the law of the Lord to his people. Now, we've seen letters before in Ezra, but this one is truly astonishing. It gives a lot of detail about Ezra's mission. Did you notice that you could have as much salt as you wanted? No limits on the salt, just that so you know, except ads, you shouldn't put as much on as you probably do already. Okay, limits on salt. But there's a lot of detail here, but let's pick up on a few of them. Importantly, and here's the big picture here in, in chapter 7. Notice that Ezra has the king of Persia's full backing. That's quite extraordinary. It shouldn't just wash over us. This is a secular king who has nothing to do with God's people, and yet he's given Ezra his full backing. Here's a couple of things. Ezra is actually being sent by that king. Look at verse 14. And he can bring with him any one of those exiled people living out of Israel, and he can return with them to Jerusalem. In other words, the visas have been sent in and approved by the authorities that matter. But what's the main aim of this mission? Like, why this letter? Why this mission in the first place? Well, that's set out in the rest of verse 14. Have a look. Ezra's mission was to make inquiries about Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of your God, which is in your hand. To make inquiries according to the law of your God, which is in your hand. In other words, to find out whether people are following God's laws or not, and then setting about to teach them and what that law says and to live it. Now, then you have verses 15 to 17 here. You see, Ezra's also going to have the work of transporting items to the temple that would ensure proper worship, proper temple practices and sacrifices. And that's really important. But as the rest of this book of Ezra will show us, the main mission was still all about the law and whether the people were just doing religious rituals 
or actually following what God said. In other words, when you think of Ezra, did the people's allegiance, that allegiance to the Lord, did it go beyond doing religious things in a rebuilt temple? Did they deeply know and do the Lord's word or simply make postures and empty religious gestures? Well, those are searching questions in any era, aren't they? Well, we're going to find in the rest of the book of Ezra that they really needed his work. They needed to hear God's word taught, see it applied, and lived out. Now, here's what I think we should find remarkable in chapter 7. All of this mission is being authorized, decreed is the word used here, by the king of Persia. It's a reform movement that's been described, a reform movement among God's people. Now, did you notice that little phrase right at the start of the section? Look at verse 12. Who's writing this decree? Well, apparently it's the king of kings. That's some description for the king of Persia, isn't it? Artaxerxes, verse 12. And yet, astonishingly, we can see that all of this is underwritten by a much higher power than the so-called king of kings the God of heaven, who gave his law to his people and is now providing one of his best teachers, Ezra, to call them to obey his word. It's astonishing, isn't it? It's the sovereign, the king of the so-called king of kings, who's the one providentially making his decree and opening doors for restoration in Jerusalem, using the king of Persia. And all that opening the way for this teacher so amazingly, it's, it's the king of the king of kings who's making the decree. Don't miss that. And you see, remarkable too, as well as this decree by the king of the king of kings, look how the provision floodgates just spring wide open here. Provision after provision after provision. Look at verse 18. Whatever seems good to you and your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and gold, you may do according to the will of your God. In other words, take it and do with it. You have this at your disposal. Look at verse 20. Whatever else is required for the house of your God, which it falls to you to provide, you may provide it. How? Out of the king's treasury. Provision after provision. Look at verse 21. You see, all the local financial controllers, they're going to give generous financial backing as well. Verse 24. There's going to be tax exemptions for temple workers. Provision after provision, after provision. It's clear who's in charge. It's the king of the king of kings. From the sovereign hand of the Lord to bring about his purposes. Now, don't miss this. You see specifically here what's going on as we've seen. What is the Lord's purpose? Well, it's getting Ezra to Jerusalem to teach his laws and inspire his people, or a form movement among those people. That's what God's purpose is here. And you know, far too often, this perspective of God's sovereign hand on, on leaders of the world, or power brokers that be, or finances, it gets a bit blurred in our sights. Like what we said at the start, the visor gets covered over. How can God be in control when that is happening? Our sights get blurred very, very often. And if you think about it, that's all the more reason why each one of us needs to open the Bible like this. It's all the more reason why we need to be Ezra-like, with hearts set on God's Word. Because as we study it like this, we're getting a glimpse of something. As we study it in groups and as individuals, by ourselves, it's as if the visor gets cleared and wiped. The filter gets changed. And then suddenly and stunningly we see it the most illuminating of views. God is on the move. God's purposes. God's sovereign hand at work. We need to look up and see God is still working. And then allow something else. You see, if that is the view, as we look at the Bible, God is sovereignly in control. We've seen that here in Scripture. We've seen it in Ezra 7. If that is true, that should inspire us to that renewed trust we spoke about at the start that renewed determination to be the ones that swear allegiance to Christ, the ones that cast our anchor once again into his word 
and have confidence in Christ, if that's our vision. Because just remember, and this is our Bibles open again, remember where God's sovereign hand gave his most abundant provision? Where in Scripture does God give us the most? That's at the cross. Powerfully providing forgiveness that you couldn't earn. Powerfully defeating enemies who were just too strong. Powerfully overcoming evil and darkness that were too bleak. Powerfully restoring people who were too sinful to self-save. That's you and me. Powerfully bringing people out of blind slavery to sin and under a good new master. That's God's powerful provision in Christ. Powerfully at work in the lives of Christians, one day and one battle at a time. So as you read and study Ezra, and as we do that now today, his mission, it should spark that longing for God's ultimate rescue. You see, that's what God's about. He's providing By his sovereign hand, the resources, the leaders, the teaching, the direction, the vision back to his word. And seeing again that it was in his sovereign hand that directed not just Ezra to Jerusalem, but Christ. That's where Christ went. And sometimes the gospels break off halfway through and Jesus sets his sights on Jerusalem to do what the Lord had set for him to do, to do the Lord's work. That's sovereign all-providing hand of the Lord. How's the work going to get done? By the sovereign hand of the Lord. I want you to just to take a look inside your own life. That's the big picture. How will the work in Dublin get done? By God's sovereign hand. But look inside just for a moment. Look at your deepest thoughts. Look at the painful circumstances going on around you. You'll feel pangs that things are just not right. And when you're wondering, how will the work of restoring this personal mess ever get done? Well, I want you to see the the word of God revealing the powerful, providential provision of God using servants like Ezra and then sending the ultimate rescuer, Christ. God's sovereign hand is on your shoulder too. From the affairs of state, yes, to the events of your life. Think about your life. How did you hear the gospel? How are you sitting here listening to it in a room in Black Rock? The Lord's sovereign hand on your life. And how will all the restoration get done? In Christ, that's how. That's God's answer. So come and trust him. Come and renew your trust in him. Your allegiance, your anchor to his word, your confidence, not in yourself, but in Christ this summer. So there we've seen it, Ezra's mission. That also points us to Christ's mission. But did you pick up on those last couple of verses in chapter 7? You see, here we have Ezra's reflections. And for the first time in this book, it, it suddenly breaks into the first person. We get Ezra's personal take. Look at those last two verses of chapter 7 where we see um, Ezra's reflections. Look from verse 27. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king, to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, and to extend it to me, Ezra, steadfast love before the king and his counselors, and before all the king's mighty officers. Did you see it? As Ezra speaks for the first time in this book, he says, blessed be God. Reflecting on what's happened, he can't but conclude that God deserves praise. Praise God. Blessed be God. It might be the king's heart, but it's the Lord's hand that directed it. That's God's mighty hand at work. And the Lord's hand that stretched out to Ezra, even using a pagan king, but stretched out to Ezra in his love. And Ezra's response, well, what does he do? He simply marvels. He recognizes it. And he praises God. And then look what Ezra says. Look at the rest of verse 28 here. He says, I took courage. And there's that phrase again. For the hand of the Lord my God was on me. And I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. 
See, God's sovereign hand is at work, providing him with the courage to, to do the work. God not only worked in the heart of a secular king, he provided, he provided, and he provided all those provisions, all that the mission needed, and then he gave Ezra, his servant, courage to do the work. Isn't that something else? We take it for granted that Ezra had all this, but even Ezra can see here, well, no, even the courage that I had to go and do this mission came from God's sovereign hand. And so as we look at Ezra, the forerunner um, of Jesus to Jerusalem, we learn that courage needed for God's work in your life, in our homes, in our workplaces, in Dublin, God's going to be the one who provides it. God will provide us the courage. God will provide us the courageous leadership for that gospel work in Dublin. And, and there's something about knowing that God is sovereign that should make our prayers for that work more fervent. It should personally allow each one of us to speak up for Christ and allow that to raise in volume and frequency in our lives, our hearts tuned to his mission through us. Would you let that work take place in your life this summer? Volume up, opportunities up to share what God is doing. I took courage for the hand of the Lord my God was on me and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. You see, as Ezra reflects, he also sees that God has provided these companions for the mission too. He's provided him with courage and companions. And he praises God for each thing. Look what God has given. Even the leaders to go with him. Leaders for the work. How will all the restoration work get done? I looked in my garden just this morning. And it looks so shabby. And I was thinking about the restoration work that needs done there. Maybe our lives, maybe gospel work sometimes feels small and shabby and unkempt. But Ezra shows us yet again, who will do it? Well, the sovereign Lord will underwrite every part of it, providing everything. Not least someone who will call his people to set their lives apart and to be reformed under God's powerful word. And then ultimately, providing his son, the Lord Jesus. So, so what if we're just a hundred or so people among thousands in this city? So what? God is powerfully at work. And no more so when we don't just do religion and go through the motions and go to church and study the Bible, but actually set our hearts on it. Actually allow it to reform us as we obey it and then share it as widely as we can with courage and companions that he's given us every single time. Now, I can't always see what the Lord will do with that, but I've seen enough of God's hand in history to know that he has put all of his resources at this one. He can be trusted, and so he deserves my allegiance. He deserves my life and my worship. What about you? Well, let's take just a moment to pray. Father, thank you for your hand in history. Thank you for how you show us, even in the work of Ezra, that Old Testament teacher, getting back to Jerusalem, taking courage in your work. Thank you that you've shown us in him that you're the one that underwrites everything. Father, you're the one that in history sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And would there be a stirring in our hearts this summer that we would see that this is your work that you've called us to. There is work to be done. And we don't look to our own resources or our own numbers. We look to the ones you will open up and provide for us. And Father, we ask you boldly to provide them. Provide the resources for a reform movement in Dublin. One that starts in every single heart in this room of people set apart for your work, obeying your word, hearing your call, tuning out every other allegiance, bar yours, bar Christ, setting apart every other call in our lives and time, except your word, being your people. And then would you help us to praise you as we do it. 
to praise you together for the work that you're doing through us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder see everything you've made and then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. Well, why don't you stand and sing that with us? Let's marvel at what the Lord has done and is doing. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome water consider all the works that I have made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power through How 
Amen. Well, please do sit down for just a moment. Uh, thanks again for joining us here at BlackRock. Uh, we'd love for you to, uh, to keep with us during this summer as we continue and finish this journey through Ezra. Uh, you can catch up on all those podcasts. They're available wherever you pick up your podcasts and catch up on what the Lord is teaching us through this book and enroll this summer in that deep study of God's Word. And if you need help in, in that, um, speak to me for some resources. And remember, don't leave without your Yorkie. Um, I should have said that half of those have a share bar. They're dual bars. So um, some of you men may want to share it with someone else, uh, or you may just want to take one and have it yourself quietly later. But whatever you do with it, um, we hope you enjoy the gift. And also stick around for a cup of tea or coffee just afterwards. God bless you, and see you next week. And age to age he stands and time is in his hand, beginning at the end, beginning at the end. The gods hit three and one, by the Spirit's son, the light and Yeah.